Mr. Rod Ferguson, the guy that oversees all things Diablo at Blizzard Entertainment, recently did an interview with Windows Central where he discussed the highs and lows of Diablo 4. And you know, after reading this interview, which is really just an article, like, come on, Windows Central is 2024. Can you guys switch to video format already? Anyways, after reading the information given, it is abundantly clear Blizzard just does not get it. So the article opens up with Rob Ferguson being asked why season two has been the highlight for the game this far. I think it's a combination of a couple of things. I think the vampire fantasy is a strong one that's easily relatable. Okay, really quick, I want to interject. I want to point out how stupid it is to say this. He's basically talking about power fantasy and saying season two was vampire themed, thus it allowed players to live out the power fantasy of being a vampire. Bruh, this is a Diablo game. This is an action RPG. Power fantasy is part of the appeal of the genre. The fact that you needed a seasonal theme to give this to the players shows just what an awful state the game was in at the time of season two. Maybe if you didn't do that massive nerf, sometimes you need a little medicine and right before season one, the game would have just been in a better state this entire time. Malignancy or malignant heart or corruption is a little harder to necessarily get right away. A malignant tunnel. So if you are the way, trying to... That's also the name of my colonoscopy. The mal okay. There we go. <laughs> and... Uh, it's a serious thing when you're over 50. This is, you should and know that. That's, that's actually a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. So if you have a malignant uh, tunnel, you should get yourself checked out. Whereas vampires, you instantly understand. So I think there's the notion of approachability. But I also think season two helped us understand what we need to do around things like Helltide. And one of the big things we're also learning as I go back to your original question about what we are learning through the seasons is really around monster density. It's crazy to me how they point out that they believe season two was a success due to the power fantasy and monster density. How is that not a given from the very beginning? This is a Diablo game, killing hundreds, nay thousands of monsters in a badass way to collect loot is the name of the game. Secondly, how did this game even launch? You had to optimize the engine to allow for more monster density? The game's not even a year old yet. Why are you having to go back and fine tune the engine to allow for more monsters? What was this game built on? I mean, you have to load player stash tabs whenever you come across them in the world or town. You have to optimize the engine to allow for more monsters. Do we load the monster stash tabs as well? Like, come on. He even goes on to explain that in further seasons, they will keep increasing monster density, but each time they have to go back and re-optimize the engine again and again. At this point, it really feels like Diablo 4 was made on spaghetti code, but let's move on. So the next topic was questions about the PTR. I mean, public test drums is completely a new concept and has never been done before. So the fact that Blizzard waited until season four to add a PTR to the game is quite an accomplishment. And I'm very excited to see what Rod Ferguson had to say. There are pros and cons to PTR. Like season four is such a big change that we definitely needed to get more feedback than usual. If you look at season three, we released it and we got some immediate feedback. Diablo 4 Season 3 launched this week, and apparently everyone hates it. I was actually genuinely shocked by how much people don't like Season 3. If you go on social media, if you go on Reddit, I have not seen this much negativity about the game in a long time. He shits himself. I don't think we need... Can we even watch this? And then we patched up pretty quickly. And so we could patch Season 3 in the first three days. So we can respond pretty quickly to that stuff. There is a lot of value you get out of the surprise and delight aspects that a PTR can in some ways take away some of the excitement. All right, I'm going to interject really quickly. Could you imagine if season three got a PTR, how low the numbers would have been at the launch of season of the construct? The entire theme was just awful. It's so bad that not even a PTR could have saved the season. They would have had to scrap the entire idea. And it could work for or against you, depending on what you're trying to do. And that's kind of like we are, like, hey, the stuff we really need to test, like crafting and all the new systems. Let's get that out there. 
but if there is something, anything to do with the seasonal theme, we'll hold that back to be a little bit of a surprise and delight. So there's still something left to discover. I think we are learning. This is our first one. Hey, uh, just was wondering, is this uh, an out of season April Fool's joke? So basically he's saying they're only going to do PTRs for large updates. Remember when they said Diablo 4 was being built from the ground up with that life service mindset? That each season would be large and more elaborate than anything we've ever gotten in a Diablo game before. Well, apparently not, because they're just going to be tiny updates that don't need a PTR, and we've kind of already seen that with the first three seasonal themes. He also goes on to discuss how he wishes he could put the PTR on consoles, but can't due to the console certification process, so they're limited to just Battle.net. Which is kind of weird, because you could always put the PTR on Steam, I really don't know what's stopping you there, but whatever, let's move on. So, the last subject they discuss is microtransactions and how they want them to be easier to purchase, and the future of MTXs in the game. What we are trying to do with how to interpret the teasing from the campfires is a little bit of both. If you look at easier to acquire, at least from a purchase perspective, like we just released these class bundles, where you could get two different looks for a much cheaper price. So we did one of those for each class perhaps less than half of what our top armor stuff normally goes for. So we wanted to find places for people to use the shop, but at a lower price point. Everything is falling apart. All right, guys, I'm sorry. I just cannot do it. This is an absolute joke. Talk about PR talk. You want to make microtransactions easier to acquire? Do two simple things. Make them reasonably priced and get rid of premium currency. Just show what the item actually costs and allow players to enter their credit card information and simply buy the skin they want. Now Rod does go on to discuss changes that they want to make to the cash shop and some of the new cosmetics and how they're going to be dialing it up a bit more. You know, at this point, I've given up arguing over the fact that the game has a cash shop, a battle pass, a box price, paid expansions. But one thing I really wish they would have kept is the atmosphere the game was supposed to have. They promised this game was going to be a dark and gritty and a return to what Diablo is meant to be. Whether it's the art, the story, or the horror elements that we've embraced, the first thing you will notice about Diablo 4 is that we are going back to the franchise's darker roots. Yeah, real dark and gritty with a peacock skin. Very, very intimidating. But you know what? I want to hear what you guys think. What did you think about this latest information from Windows Central? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. By the way, if you did enjoy this video, let me know by dropping a like. And if you are new, please consider subscribing. As for me, I got a ton of work to do, so I'm going to get back to the grind and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.